You're watching Telecom TV's exclusive video coverage of Gen 15 from Dallas. And I'm joined now by James Hamilton, who is CEO of Wedge Networks. James, thanks for joining us on Telecom TV. Great to be here. What is the real state of security within our networks today? You know, it always seems like we're taking at least a step forward. There's a tremendous amount of uh, investment and innovation in security, a tremendous amount of uh, venture capital and small companies that are coming up with innovative ideas. But then you have a high profile breach and we take two steps backwards and we have to sort of rethink it. And one of the challenges, of course, is that now everything is out of the, uh, the enterprise and moved to the cloud. So when we talk at, at events like this about SDN and NFV, yes. this network evolution, we're really pushing technology in networks, we're doing, sure. doing amazing things. How does that impact security? Is, is, is it creating more challenges? Is it alleviating some? You know, I think NFV, from an application standpoint, is a perfect example, and security is a great example of a application that we can deploy today. SDN, from a technology standpoint, I think in theory and practice has been two different things, certainly from a security perspective. But NFV, our ability to virtualize security applications, be able to run them more cost effectively, in the cloud, perhaps at an egress point that's you know tens of gigabits or multi-gigabit speeds, um, it has to be a virtualized service. If you try to do it with purpose-built or appliances, it would be very costly, very difficult to implement, and you'd probably have to go with uh, multiple best-of-breed products. So NFV allows you to do a lot of things, scale the service very quickly, and also do a lot of different applications and apply security policy much more efficiently. So in a way, we're, we're rethinking our approach to security. For sure, yeah, for sure, for sure. And uh, you know, what you're also seeing is a lot of the service providers that are looking at different ways to provide security as a service. They're either augmenting existing services, right, making my security posture better, or they're potentially offering a security service to an enterprise that might not have one at all. They might just have a desktop antivirus or a firewall, but that's not really enough today. So we're really actually trying to uh, get the service providers to think in a different way and then embrace that and extend that to their customers. So I guess also there's, a, there's like a, a cost, cost risk equation going on here. How much does a service provider invest in security? They've invested a lot in the network anyway. They've got a lot of legacy things in place. Do they need to spend more money here? It is true. It's a common theme with every discussion. So it's the sort of the business decision first. Do I want to get into this business? So the revenue for, per customer potentially would increase. The broadband services are somewhat commoditized, right? We have a partnership here with a group from uh, Houston uh, Phonoscope, and he said 18 months ago he was getting $1,000 for a 100 meg symmetrical. Now it's about 400. So he's seeing quite a bit of erosion. So he's very excited uh, about a, deploying new security services to his customers, but he also has a tremendous investment in his infrastructure. So it has to really be able to plug and play, work very well, uh, frankly be driven by the network that he has in place to deploy those services. And I think the last thing that potentially is overlooked, but is certainly something that we're trying to address, is the user experience. You have a, a varying degree of security sophistication out there, so for a user to really adopt it and appreciate a security service has to be something that they can understand and work with. One of the other trends we are seeing at the moment in the industry is the move towards open solutions. Um, what, what impact does, does that have? Because the initial thought is open, open yes. source, whoa, that's going to be open to misuse and what have you. Right. Um, so what's the real impact of, of going open? Yeah, you know, we embrace that. And again, the concept, if you think about NFV as an optimization platform where we can orchestrate a lot of different services, we would do a number of partnerships and we have an open bus architecture that allows us to deploy um, services that we have, maybe anti-spam, anti-malware, DLP, web filtering, but also there's a breadth of other applications like a partnership with a web app firewall provider, which we have, and we deploy that on our platform. So highly scalable, high performance, easy to implement and manage, but a breadth of security policies from one single panel, one single pane of glass. That's the idea. Final question for you. What's your advice to, whether it's enterprises or communication service providers, regards security, what, what are the best practices? What should they be doing? You know what's hot right now, and I actually am a, a big advocate for, is uh, analytics. If you think about disparate security devices, they all have their own perspective. There was a story I was told years ago about um, you know, a man that was blindfolded and he hugged a tree and a fan and a snake and of course he took the blindfold off and it was an elephant. So the idea there is very much around all these different security products have their own perspective, but they're all wrong. So everyone generates a lot of noise, alerts, alarms, logs. 
the, the, the path for all of this is analytics and big data, where you can actually get some collective wisdom out of all that information and intuition. You're going to get hacked, you're going to get breached. If it happens, what sort of behavioral things are happening and how can I sort of interpret that and take action and find out that, that, that information quickly. That's what the analytics piece is coming and you'll see it's a big play for security. James, thank you very much for talking with us. Absolutely, thank you, Guy.